other one, you bastard. Brought to you by supporters who probably have better taste than this schmuck. Yep. Okay, thanks for nothing. Okay, so... I just got off the phone with the fire department. Apparently they won't fix our house because of a pedoral hazard. As if that thing hasn't already burned inside there alive already. So, could you please use your wizard magic to... Why did I expect anything else? Rule 1 to escaping a house fire, save the collection first. Sure, I lost all my childhood photos, papers that determine what siege is and isn't, prized copies of Legend of Zelda Spirit Tracks and Phantom Hourglass, which I still haven't played yet, but at least I still have my dignity. No, wait, I just did a 30 minute review sh** on Cliff Jumper, so I probably didn't have any to begin with. Anyway, I'm okay, but there's one small problem. So between this, Vaughn being interstate for committing a magic-related felony, and me somehow losing access to Insane in the Rain's archive of music in the process, Carlos oh, Senpai, why have you forsaken me? Future episodes, at least for the time being, will undergo a format change. Oh well, sometimes life just throws things at you, and you've just got to keep moving. So, onwards and downwards. <laughs> Look, I think we all have to admit one sad fact. When it comes to Transformers, Fembots, by and large, have always had issues in the engineering department. I mean, already we have to deal with Hasbro's backwards worldview on Fembots won't sell well to male collectors argument. Yeah, tell that to the billion Windblade versions that sold like crazy. Even the Cyberverse version sold out instantly, and that one was f***ing terrible. But beyond that, a lot of Fembot molds are just bad. RC seems to be the poster child for this, with so many lackluster attempts. But other fembots have the same issues. No, 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 no. We can't engineer the parts properly. We have to shove everything into the backpack. And it's not just official figures either. Have you seen Fans Toys Rouge? You ever seen Fans Hobby Minerva? You ever seen f Zeta RC? That thing is rank. Now, a lot of the time, I'm pretty understanding of the engineering process. Hell, I even tolerate faux parts and clear hinges when done right, whereas the rest of the fandom will chuck a hissy fit at a moment's notice. However, in this instance, I just don't see the reason why. There has to be a better way to engineer female Transformers. There has to be a better approach than shoving everything into the backpack like no one cares. And you know what? I think today it's a good opportunity to examine some evidence of that. Greetings, Cybertronians. I'm Dr. Lockdown, and today's diagnosis pertains to Kingdom, WFC K14, Deluxe Class, Air Razor. So right off the bat, things aren't looking promising in the conceptual department. As much as I love the Kingdom line, beast modes are always compromised in some shape or form. Sometimes it's articulation limitations, others it's kibble complications, and others it's the designers falling asleep at their desk. Then you take into the fact that this is a Fembot Transformer, and although it shouldn't be the case, often on mainline Transformers, sacrifices are made. I mean, sure, RC turned into a bar of soap in the G1 cartoon. Everyone remembers that, right? Point is, this mode is set up for Failure. It's got the card stacked against it, and oh my god, this isn't just a resounding success, it's a masterful one! Out of all the beast modes the Kingdom has given us, this has to be one of the best. Doesn't quite take the top spot, as that belongs to Rat Trap, but f*** me, she's close. Of course, the devil is in the details, so we'll have to take a closer look to understand why this works so well. The first thing you'll notice is probably the gorgeous wingspan. Sure, they could have done a simple flat plastic chunk with a few lines here and there, and it would have been satisfactory with its impressive width. But this isn't your average Transformers line we're dealing with here. This is Kingdom. We deal with class on a daily basis, old chum. The feather detail on this thing is truly awe-inspiring, with so many subtle crevices all over the place. I'm sure I've mentioned this in the Dinobot review, but Hasbro specifically hired freelance sculptors well-versed in this sort of thing to make sure this line turned out well. And my word, this has got to be one of the best applications I've seen across the board. The sculpting and profile work perfectly in tandem with one another, with the feather sweeping backwards to add that extra little bit of personality. It allows Air Razor to not just look stunning in bird is the word mode, but also allow some more definition when these wings become a backpack. And sure, there are blips here and there, such as the lack of paint and somewhat conspicuous tabs in the backpack area, but I can't get mad at them. For the former, budgets do have to be considered, especially when you see the result in robot mode. Sure, there is a beautiful wash effect in some areas, and I would love to see more of it, but the sculpting keeps it from looking boring. And as for the latter, well, it's a deluxe. If this is the worst that comes of it, who cares? Although I do find it funny how people were hypothesizing that said tabs were evidence of an eventual silver bolt. No, not that silver bolt. That silver bolt. Yes, I'm dead serious. And that somehow that would lead to a retool into Magnaboss. In reality, it's really just for pegging the wings into the backpack. But it's fun to look back and see what the fandom thought. We are getting a silver bolt slash Beast Wars Neo Skywarp, though. Yes, I love deliberately getting Beast Wars 2 and Beast Wars Neo mixed up to piss off my audience. 
audience. How could you tell? Wait, nobody's seen either of those shows anyway. Fans of that part of the franchise don't exist. Anywho, the falcon head sculpt looks fantastic as well and has the same quality of paint presented with Rat Trap. A quick Google search of what falcons look like reveals that they've switched up the screen model design for something a bit more realistic, even though the screen model was actually fairly in line with how falcons actually look as well. If I had to take a guess, I guess the more toon-centric colour scheme lends itself to a different subspecies of falcon, so the designers probably went with that choice. That's not a criticism though, because it's still magnificently detailed and fits very well with the aesthetic. Once again, the sculpt work is absolutely mental, and look, they even added an articulated beak. F me, that's attention to detail. In fact, the whole articulation is actually surprisingly great. So often we get stuck with beast modes that are essentially bricks, so to see something this dynamic is actually quite shocking. Yes, I could ask for a head tilt from side to side, but I can't really think of any examples that have done such in mainline, so it's not too disappointing to see the lack of one. Actually, wait, some of the Titans Return guys had them, but when those things just fold into the backpack, it's a bit of a different story. Plus, one of them practically exploded out of the box, so he gets disqualified. I've heard cases of the reissue version doing the same thing, so do be careful. Of course, said articulation is partially due to the fact that the feet turn into well, defeat. But there's not a lot of arbitrary locking here that hinders anything. Quite often, beast modes will have things stick together when they just don't need to. But with Air Razor, she wears the robot parts loud and proud. And you might think this would cause a lot of underkibble, but for the most part, it's kept pretty clean. The robot bits don't draw a lot of attention to themselves. I don't know what wizardry is going on here, but it's almost as if they turn invisible. Even the weapon storage is barely noticeable. No small feet when they're painted shiny as shit. Although if they really bother you, just consider them a throwback to the original toys gimmick. It's fine, people. It's fine. Overall, in terms of actual legitimate complaints that I feel hold this figure back from being truly brilliant. I'm sorry, I've got nothing. Is it perfect? No. Is it perfect within the constraints of the price point? Absolutely. This thing is easily one of the best alt modes I've gotten all year, and easily top three in Kingdom on the whole. She may not be the best alt mode in the line, as said earlier, but you know what? F it. She's my favourite. She's realistic, but not to a fault. The designers knew that she was going to be a $34 toy, and the general feel was the main idea they pushed, as opposed to obtrusive screen accuracy. There's an undeniable swishness to every angle, and it gives off an ambience of designer ingenuity without resorting to it feeling like a lifeless display piece. And none of this affected the size either. She's still pretty substantial for a deluxe. Guess they sacrificed some of the budget on Huffer to make up for it. Either way, she's fantastic in this mode, although with that I must apologise. We can't tackle the high points forever. Brace yourself for the worst part of the figure. Of course I exaggerate. The transformation actually isn't bad at all. In fact, I'd say it's pretty good all things considered. It's just that the bird mode and the robot mode are so bloody amazing that the transformation seems kind of mediocre in comparison. On its own, the transformation is not mediocre at all. It's actually really good, but compared to the other two, that's when things get a bit weird. But hey, there's nothing bad here. It all works incredibly well, and it's simple yet incredibly fun. First thing you want to do is remove the weapons, and I'm not going to repeat my oh no parts forming joke because that's kind of done at this point. It's weapon storage and it works quite well. For the actual transformation, let's get started with the legs. Untab these from there, rotate them down like so, so that they fold into place. Rotate these around to the back because this will actually rotate around at the waist later on. You get these feet sections that you need to push in and you need to rotate the foot around so that the nice pointy bit is facing forward, although at this point I guess it's facing back, but you do get the idea. To make some more space, you want to untab this section. That will then allow you to rotate the torso. Move the wings back and out of the way so that we can do things easier. Untab the arms from there. And what we want to do here is untab the beast head just a little bit, and of course bring that section back a bit. That will allow us to bring the beast head out on a bit of a faux ratchet there, but don't bring it down all the way yet, because this torso is on a double hinge and it swings around and to the back. Then you can bring the chest into place, and in the process it should line up the torso. I love that torso, it's very well designed. That bit from earlier will tab back into there, bring up the shoulder pads like so, bring out the fists like so, and rotate the arms into place. Nice and easy, although it does mean that there's no wrist swivels, but honestly, who cares? And you can leave it just like this if you want a nice resplendent wingspan folding from the back. But the official transformation goes like so. You want to tab the tail back into the chest. You've got hinges there and hinges there that move in like so. Then this double hinge will allow you to rotate this section all the way into the back and tab into there. That's what those mysterious tabs in the beast mode were for. No Magnavos combinations happening yet. This is just simple transformation. But anyway, if you haven't already, the wings fold down and they rotate out. And do be a little bit careful because these can come undone quite easily. And to complete the aesthetic, all you need to do is peg in the missiles or the hook shots or whatever you want to call them. I think there were missiles in the show, but it's been so long since I've watched Beast Wars. I know it was amazing, but it's been, damn, it's been a long time. And that's your lot, really. Nice and simple, but nice and effective. There's nothing crazy going on here. She doesn't 
overthink the transformations like so many fembots do. Nothing folds into the backpack and cheats. Yes, she's a beast former, so she can get away with certain things, but I appreciate that what you see is what you get. Despite this technically being the worst part of the figure overall because it's not as whiz-bang amazing as the rest of it, it does what it needs to do and it does it insanely well, and I f commend it for that. Good job, Haztac. Continue to do this with your fembots. We deserve it, mate. We deserve it. Holy f sh This... This is gorgeous! Seriously, this sh doesn't even look like it transforms. I, I mean, screen model-wise, it does. You can see all the bits and stuff, but it's so clean! Everything is, well, perfect. I think out of everything I've gotten this year, Air Razor has to be the most visually appealing I've come across. Yes, even next to goddamn Eris, Kultor, even though it's ridiculously close. The greatest visual strengths of this figure lie in the perfect harmony of tune and toy. The mechanical detail itself is firmly in the toy department, albeit through a liberal modernization filter. In terms of where everything turns up, it's pretty damn close. The prominent display of the falcon head, the back-swept wings, the flippable feet, the subtle shoulder pads, it's all here. It's all been given a much-needed upgrade, though, with proportions tweaked all over. The chest becomes multi-layered through the shoulder joints, and the torso slims down quite a bit overall. They've even disguised the tab on the chest with some extra mechanical detail. Really lovely touch. Also, as discussed early in the transformation, the wings can either tuck away nice and neatly on this insane multi-hinge system, which has the added bonus of elevating the beast mode articulation, or folding them out into a near-angelic wingspan. Move over wingspan, there's a new fan fantastic wingspan in town. Although, to be fair, I don't really think there was much competition to begin with. They've even added some subtle fade effects on the wingtips to give it that extra level of pizzazz. Oddly enough, this differs from the wash scene on the beast mode. It's awesome to see they went the extra mile. I will say though, word of warning, you may end up with stress marks around the hinges or tabs back here. I've been fairly lucky, but several of my friends have tried up to four times to get one without stress marks and have still failed miserably. Personally, stress marks don't bother me, especially on a figure this resplendent and at this price point. But if it does bother you, do be warned. Now, despite leaning heavily into the toy department with her mechanical detail, Air Razor never feels toyetic. This is due to her other foot stomping firmly into the CGI model. No, not like that. Stop being horny, you stupid f Three key elements get drawn from the cartoon. The head sculpt, the colours, and the weapon choice. And at least as far as the first two are concerned, this is what pushes the figure into the quality stratosphere. With the first point, there's really no way to confuse the resemblance, and honestly, this choice was way better. If you had the choice between a falcon crown or a bug-eyed monster, any sane person would know what to choose. That being said, they haven't gone insanely accurate here. The general sculpt has gone through the same proportion fixer filter as the rest of the body, widening the whole thing, pushing the faux beak forward to become more prominent, and going nuts on the protruding feathers, making her akin to one of the Greek pantheon. As such, the head feels robustly designed, as opposed to almost anorexic, like the screen model. I reckon if they ever did a masterpiece version, this design would ultimately end up being the superior of the two. Not knocking the mainframe design, but come on, this is better. That's not what makes this figure so desirable, though. No, that would be the colour scheme. From every single angle, Air Razor exudes a regal aura through crisp orange, deep stone brown, and truly divine gold. Seriously, the gold on this thing is f gorgeous, and it's especially commendable considering it's not all painted. A lot of this is unpainted plastic used for joints and such, and yet it somehow maintains the same lustrous sheen as the rest of the design. I really want to see this used on future Transformers. Imagine a Thunderclash using the same shade. Christ, that would be awesome. But yes, honestly, I think that makes her the darling of the wave. Far as I can gather, she's the only one who consistently sells out wherever you go. Different figures shell form in different parts of the world, but consistently Air Razor sells out at a steady pace. Gee, it's almost like when you design a good figure, people will flock to it regardless of gender. Who'd have thunk it, Hasbro? Finally, the weapons are also a hallmark of the cartoon, and although I can't really get as excited as the rest of the robot mode, I still think it was the right choice. Let's be real here, having that claw gun thing would have just been weird. I like how appropriate these feel for the design. I'm not one to complain when characters get weird outlandish weapons, but I feel that when it comes to the aesthetic a figure goes for, the weapons should be in line with that. You don't want to end up with a case like last night. Squeaks, where... Come on, what the f**k is this sh**? Honestly, the only complaint I can think of, and I mean the absolute only one, is the fact that the bottoms of the calf sections don't actually lock in solidly. I get that at the budget there wasn't much they could have done, but it's still a smidge annoying. And that's all I can criticise. Everything else is, well, practically perfect. She's absurdly well detailed, beautifully painted, well balanced, and all around fun. She doesn't lack any key articulation areas that the War for Cybertron trilogy is known for, so right off the bat you can get some great poses from her in this mode. I mean, sure, the wrists don't rotate due to the transformation, but given the kind of weapon she wields, I don't think this design really needs one. She's even well-sized. I mean, sure, she's petite, but she's not ridiculously tiny. Appropriate, considering her alt mode. Nothing on the robot mode looks boring in any way. I mean, sure, there's no paint on the aforementioned calves, but when you notice the tune-inspired orange and grey combo on the thighs, you honestly 
honestly don't notice anything. Seriously, this robot is so good that it ends up making the transformation the worst part of the package. The transformation isn't bad in any way whatsoever, but both modes are individually so great that it just feels adequate and nothing more. But I suppose that highlights one key thing. The transformation doesn't incorporate any whiz-bang crazy engineering. She doesn't need anything particularly crazy to work well. In many ways, she's similar to the recently released and previously mentioned Mastermind Creations Eris Kultor. Both are fembots with surprisingly solid alt modes that shouldn't work given previous track records, but somehow do. Both have truly stunning robot modes that draw inspiration from previous ideas, sure, but imbue those ideas with their own identities. And at their core, both are refreshingly simple. Both use imaginative but far from complicated engineering to accomplish what they're doing. And both are living proof that when it comes to designing a fembot, you really don't have to overthink things. With all these backpack formers and parts formers being released left, right, and center, you have to ask, why? Usually I don't point to one figure and say all figures should be done like that, but in this instance, I can't see why other fembots can't be designed in the same way. It's not even a one-time thing. Black Arachnia and Jet Shadow have proven you can do it effectively as well. You don't need to be complex, you just need to be smart. And if Haztac starts doing more figures like these in the future, then we are in for an absolute treat. Wait, sh there's no camera to cut to for the final thoughts. Damn, I gotta get used to this. Anyhow, suffice to say, Air Razor is an absolutely fantastic figure, and one of the best deluxes released all year. If you're a fan of Beast Transformers, you're in for an absolute treat, and if you're not, I'd still highly recommend getting one, because I have a good feeling you'll be one over anyway. Yes, that includes UG1 fans, she's just that good. The question is, is she a contender for figure of the year? Well, yes actually. I'm dead serious, she might be the best figure I've gotten so far. I'm not completely sure if she takes the top spot though. Full transparency, throughout the year, Air Razor, Cyclonus, and Grimlock have been playing Ring Around the Roses for the top spot. And on any given day, I can give you a completely different ranking for completely different reasons. I guess it speaks volumes for the quality of these figures, but it doesn't make things any easier. Then f***ing Eris shows up and makes me rethink the whole thing as well, but honestly I have no clue whether she's amazing or if it's just new toy bias. Seriously, I really want to review her, but if I do it now I'm just going to be too blinded by my own stupidity. Either way, you should really buy this one. Buying her sends a message to Hasbro that you want more figures like this. Hell, buy Black Arachnia while you're at it. She's not fantastic, but she's definitely quite fun as well. Buy these, and Hasbro may start evening out the gender divide. It's been a sausage fest for far too long now, because Hasbro lacks the imagination to go beyond the traditional backpack foldover trick. Toys end up being designed poorly, people end up skipping them, they end up shell forming, and the cycle continues. It's time to break out of this shithole. Hell, grab a Prime RC from Legacy when it comes out next year. We are overdue for proper fembot molds. So it's time to put our money where our mouths are and show Hasbro that they really need to invest where it counts. I guess ultimately all I'm saying is, I just really want to chug strong arm. Come on, man, I'm dying out here!